Hey folks, it's Wednesday, a little bit after noon. It's time for another Facebook Live. We always appreciate you joining us, be it live or after the fact on the Facebook feed we have for Focus on New Mexico. Pleased to be joined today by Kirsten Pye Buick. She is the newly named director of the University of New Mexico's Africana Studies program. And welcome and congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. It's a Absolutely. pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Let me give the folks a little bit more sense of your background. You, you didn't just show up in this position. So you've been a professor of art history. You've been an associate dean of equity and excellence, a special assistant to the dean of arts and sciences. And you recently took over the post of director of Africana studies, of course, and you bring all of that to UNM over 20 years. And I have to say, it's, it's a pretty amazing accomplishment when you think about all that's happened with Africana Studies, uh, the program over the years, it's really been building towards something. Um, I, why did you want to take this role, additional role on in the first place is my first question. Well, I, I've been here 20 years, as you said, and mm -hmm. about 10 years ago, I was associate director of Africana Studies and mm -hmm. left the post kind of heartbroken because um, you know, at that point, we were over 40 years of program on campus, and I just didn't feel the support from mm -hmm. upper administration at the time or from other departments. That has changed. And under the leadership of President Garnett Stokes, uh, Provost James Holloway, Dean Arash Mafi, uh, um, Finney Coleman as the head of the Faculty Senate, all of that um, decided decided for me that I would try again and usher the program to departmental status. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, it's a great uh, segue right there because the biggest news, of course, is this is a crucial time for the program because Africana Studies is slated to become a full-fledged ethnic studies department. How does that change things for you and your approach? What it does is it, it allows us to take on full-time tenure faculty and to promote them up through the ranks to associate and full professor. And we become equals in the institution. In, in, in what sense? Equals in what sense for non-academic folks? The, well, job security, right? The mm -hmm. teaching load for a tenure track professor is two classes per semester with time mm -hmm. off for research. And so it allows the, the future department to uh, grow, grow in, in intellect, grow in muscle, grow in, in kind of everything. But I do wanna acknowledge that in the past, the professors that we've had, the adjuncts, the postdocs have all sustained us to this point. And so I just want to acknowledge what they've done. The previous directors, uh, retired former faculty, they, they've, held, they've held it down. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that because when I look at the UNM uh, faculty and staff page for Africana Studies, it's like a New Mexico all-star team of, you know, of amazing black minds. Emmanuel Ansonier, of course, Charles Becknell Jr., give me a break. You know what I mean? Marsha Hardman. Natasha Howard, Dr. Jamal Martin, one of our favorite uh, friends here at uh, New Mexico PBS, Cheryl Means, of course, Extura Woodley, she's been around forever. You know, Edmoso uh, Shankuri, these are amazing people. I mean, what is that like to be coming into a situation? You're not having to rebuild a staff here. You have, you have a, a tremendous staff you're going to just walk into. Right. And, and what that means is doing right by the ones who are there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in, in terms of postdocs, if at all possible, transitioning them to tenure track, um, providing them with research support so that they can uh, generate the publications that make tenure possible. It's so, you know, coming in and supporting what's there and helping to grow what's there. Mm -hmm. What's your, what's your sort of a philosophy about hiring new faculty? What are you looking for in someone to be uh, able to teach in the Africana Studies program? If, if they are themselves grounded in Africana Studies, then um, 
excellence in that area, right? We've had examples, Cortez Williams, for example, it's a great example, uh, you know, his pioneering work on Blacks in the Southwest, which we've um, kind of retooled. So the African diaspora in the Southwest. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so someone who, if they are, you know, grounded in Africana studies, demonstrating the excellence of what that means, if they are joint appointments, then making sure that they know their, their, dis, their main discipline thoroughly so that when they come to Africana studies, they bring the richness of that other discipline into Africana studies, but understand that, that kind of other discipline through the lens of, of Africana studies, what it means to be a people right, who, who has a very unique and complex and complicated history, genealogy, you know, we are, we are the definition of, of, of complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there, is there, let me put it this way, is there something about the Southwest and our place in it that actually sort of narrows your choices? I, I have to, it's just in my imaginings, I don't know anything about this, but It'd be, you, you're going to need someone who understands the Southwest, I'm imagining, uh, as well. Yes, someone who understands the Southwest and mm -hmm. who understands our uh, partnerships with the, the surrounding pueblos and mm -hmm. reservations, who understands Hispanic and Latinx, right, that we are a crossroads. And, you know, the reason I actually took this job over 20 years ago was because when I interviewed, the ways in which this institution in this state understands itself to be American is very different than either coast. And so I've stayed for over 20 years because I have a lot of headspace here. I have a lot of room to think, um, to research, to write, to be creative. And my teaching, my scholarship has been enriched by this place, mm -hmm. right? By my, my connections and obligations to First Nations people, my connections and obligations to Hispanic people. Mm -hmm. I can relate to that. When you move here from somewhere else, it's, yeah, I, I, can, I can totally connect to that. Interestingly, uh, one of the hard fought things over the past decade or so, as you know, was to be able to get the program off in the right way. And you're going to start with a master's uh, program, which is pretty interesting. And eventually, at some point, a PhD program. I have to think you're coming into this at a, a, just an incredible time to shepherd both of those programs. I'm so curious your, your feelings about having a master's program to get your arms around right out, right out of the gate. I, I, I'm ready. I have been chairing search committees since I was an assistant <laughs> professor here. Mm -hmm. You know how that works, right? We're, I, I never saw it as overly burdensome, the things I was asked to do because I am minoritized with, you know, within the system and I, I am, uh, I'm a woman. And so, uh, and a black woman in particular, I never saw it as burdensome. I always saw it as opportunities. And so in the over 20 years I've been here, mm -hmm. in my own department of uh, art and in my area of art history, I have helped to transform that place. We finally have um, uh, uh, an indigenous person teaching Pueblo pottery. We finally have a black woman teaching art studio, Stephanie Woods, Clarence Cruz as tenure track now in, in, um, in sculpture. And so I know how to transform these places. It's always the long game, right? And so it's persistence and the long game. And I have just enough left in me to, I think, <laughs> create this master's program. Right. Well, hey, it's not an easy thing. Professors are not shy personalities, that's for sure. Um, you know, interesting, I, I can't help but think about some of the broader uh, questions here, even with a PhD program. You know, and, and I'm allowing myself just to kind of think about it but, uh, in, in this sense. The students that go out in the world after finishing a PhD program in Africana Studies focused on the Southwest, 
thinking about it after a decade, a couple of decades, it's kind of exciting to think about that there is going to be, you know, folks like this getting out into our world. I'm, you mentioned the long game here. What's your long vision for students coming out of this program? It, it, again, thinking about it from PhD program is already in place down the road and how you see the perfect students sort of coming out of this whole situation. I see them as, as combining this degree with um, degrees in medicine, degrees okay. in law, degrees in philosophy. There's a great mm. need in philosophy to add some color to that discipline and truth mm -hmm. to that discipline. Mm -hmm. So I, I see it as, as veins in a body or rivers in a landscape and, and just permeating. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That is interesting. Uh, you know, which you were also part of that recent ceremony by the Smithsonian in DC for the US Postal Service. In case folks don't know about it, the 45th Heritage Stamp for artist Mary Edmonds, Edmonia Lewis. Uh, very interesting. You know, the, that part of you, I'm going to imagine, is never going to leave you. You're an artist. You're, you came up through the art department, right? How does that inform what you want to do with Africana Studies? Mm -hmm. Edmonia Lewis was interesting because she didn't have much biography. And the biography mm -hmm. she did had, have, you had to piece it together through sometimes very unkind letters written about her by her white patrons. Mm -hmm. And so um, in, in working on her, I didn't have the, the burden of biography because the problem with biography, right? Especially for people who have race or have gender is that often the biography is used to pathologize them, to paint them as sick, and then to read that sickness into their work or to read that perversity into their work, you couldn't do that with her. You had to start fresh with her and you had to build around her. And so I, I am, uh, in terms of an art, art history, I'm more empathetic to sculpture. I, I'm more sculptural in my thinking. And so mm. I pictured her as a three-dimensional absence. Right? And and so when I think about Africana studies and, and I think about her power and her creativity in the midst of all the racism and sexism, we survive. We know how to survive. And so I see Africana studies as helping provide those tools and not just to African American students or students from the, the black diaspora, but all students. And so my commitment is really to all students that you can all come to this space and learn something and learn something about survival and creativity and survival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, again, since you have a long view, you've been at that at this, I should say for, for over a decade now, I just, I'm curious about your opinion. We've had a Native American studies program, a Chicano studies program at UNM for a long time and a woman in gender studies departments for a long time. Why did it take so long for Africana studies? I, I'm still very confused. Well, why this just Chicano, didn't happen 10 years ago. Right, Chicano studies uh, just transition from program to department. <clears throat> and okay. it takes, you know, institutions are funny. They are gatekeeping you know, keeping people out as well as letting them in. And here in the Southwest, where we are overwhelmingly brown, overwhelmingly brown, and I include us in that, in that metric, mm -hmm. it seems like Research One universities in those contexts are especially invested in, in keeping us programs, in keeping us you know, on a slightly lower rung, hierarchically speaking. But as I said, there's a new day. Chicano Studies is now a department. Native American Studies, which was once a program, is now a department. And after 51 years, we are going to become a department. I'm curious about the support you've gotten from the upper levels of UNM. Have you had a chance to have a heart-to-heart -heart with President? President Stokes and others about what you want to do with the program. And I'm curious about the level of enthusiasm you've received from them as well. Mm -hmm. The people who matter, <laughs> President Stokes, Provost Holloway, Dean Arash Mafi, um, 
uh, Dr. Finney Coleman, mm -hmm. they are in full vocal support. I also have the, the deep and much appreciated support of the associate deans in arts and sciences, associate dean Mary Domsky, um, senior associate dean Philip Ganderton. And so in those ways, I feel fully supported. Now, I know, uh, having been Black all my life, right, all 58 years, I know that we are not welcome everywhere, that this process isn't welcome or accepted everywhere, but I don't live my life based on can't. I don't live my life based on side-eyed skepticism. You can't. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear that loud and clear. I want to finish with this. I, I want to thank you for noting some of the folks that preceded you, Dr. Alfred Malthusen. You didn't do it by name, but there's yes. a lot of folks out there. That Sherry, you, Dr. It, Sherry Burr. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Yes. If there's others, please go ahead and toss them in there. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, there's so many. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of folks have worked very hard, and especially Dr. Finney Coleman as well. I, I'm glad you noted him a couple of times. Um, Kirsten Pye Buick new director of the University of New Mexico's Africana Studies program, now a full-fledged program, starting with a master's program and a soon PhD program as well. Thank you so much for your time. This is very important, you know, uh, uh, not just as a personal accomplishment for you, which is big enough, but as something that we can all celebrate as African-Americans across the state. It's a big deal. And, and I really, I, I tip my hat to you. Congratulations. 10, 20 years well spent to get to this point. Let's put it that way. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thanks so much, Gene. Yeah, more than our pleasure, Kirsten. We'll catch up with you. Folks, we'll see you Friday night. We're going to have a special show this week, having a reaction to the obviously soon to be closing down legislative session, which closes tomorrow, Thursday at noon. We will have full reaction from a great panel on Friday night for that as well. So we'll see you next Wednesday for another Facebook Live. Until then, enjoy the weekend and everyone take care.